Hey, welcome back. This is Eric Arnold here in the sports barn. It is Friday, July 30th. It's uh, early afternoon here. We've got uh, five free MLB picks here for you on this Friday. Five or was it six? Uh, five. Six. All right, five, six. What's the difference? At any rate, um, coming off a okay day, you know, <laughs> went about the way I thought. Uh, the picks I was nervous about lost. And uh, the picks have felt okay with, they won. So, you know, we had the Mets. The Mets, that's it. We're probably not going to lose a whole lot more with the Mets, I don't think. We got that team figured out. That That's just a team, the model, just uh, a model works for 29 teams and then they're the Mets. Uh, so we'll just do the opposite every time uh, it comes up, and I expect we'll win every damn time. <laughs> so <laughs> we're lo looking for spots where the M Mets are in the model, and we're going to do the opposite. So the Yankees, uh, I thought that was a trap. It's like, uh, it, you know, I guess, does the rabbit think that when it gets it's getting into the trap or the mouse? You know, this is probably a trap, you know, this big old metal bar there ready to snap my neck in half. Uh, and, and who just leaves peanut butter out? Yeah, it just seems odd that there would be peanut butter in the crack of the wall here. How did it get there? I mean, you know, did the peanut butter fairy put it there? I don't know. Who worries about those things? I'm just going to stick my face into it and... You know, so that's what happened to us. I just couldn't understand why there was a peanut butter smeared all over Garrett Cole there. Just made no sense to me, but I had to have it. I had to have that cheap price on Garrett Cole. That, that was that. So 14 nothing, Crush. But then we got the other ones. Kudos to the Reds. They were behind in that game. That's a perfect spot for them to do red-like things, i.e. lose. But they came back. They came back, got it done. So a uh, slight winner for us yesterday. I don't have a whole lot to say other than baseball talk here. I glanced at the news. It looks like it's just an extension of the same. We're kind of in a holding pattern now as we kind of wait and see. Uh, is corporate America going to jump on board with the Biden mask mandates or are they going to go, eh, we're kind of done with that, you know. I, I think corporate America is kind of, you know, they got their pollsters too. And I think it's 60-40 against masks, generally speaking. Now, now you know, if you go to take that poll in San Francisco, everybody wants to wear a mask, or Washington, D.C. Or if you take that poll in Florida, nobody wants to wear a mask. So, but I think nationwide, it probably falls out about 60-40 against the masks. Even the Democrats, you know, the moderate, not crazy Marxist Democrats, you know, just Democrats. There are a few of these. I was talking about that today, that you know, I think the reason that the Democrats have been unable to do the craziest of their crazy stuff, like pack the Supreme Court and uh, do away with the guns, is because the Democrats, you know, for example, I'll give you an example of a Democrat. You've met him. He's about that tall, and he talks nonsense about the Eagles. My brother, he is a Democrat, but I will not put him yet into the Marxist category yet. Uh, so I think he's kind of like, if they would come out and say, we're packing the Supreme Court tomorrow, he might go, I don't know. I mean, did I sign up for this? Is that what I voted for? Or if they say, we're taking all the guns tomorrow, you know, he might just go, that, I, did I vote for that? I mean, I know I hate Donald Trump, but wait a minute. You know, so I think the fact that they've got some people like Mark on their team is holding them back which is a good thing for us. So uh, that's good. All right, baseball. Uh, back is getting better slowly, slowly, very slowly. We kind of like these picks today. I think we're all right. I think we're in the right place here with these things. 
We're going to come back here with the Tigers again. Um, Tigers have been very, very good to us, so why not keep playing them? Uh, Matt Harvey, if you can believe this, he has gone two consecutive outings and thrown shutout ball. What do we make of this? Uh, you know, this is a guy whose ERA was pretty consistently in the sixes and sevens. And now he's thrown two consecutive shutouts. Well, you know, what passes for a shutout? You know, six innings of shutout ball. I used to live in Missouri. You're going to have to show that one to me again, Matt Harvey. I don't believe it. I just don't think, you know, I just don't think he's found it. Uh, some magic formula. I think the injuries have just made him into a below average pitcher. So, and I think, you know, that is what he is, I believe. Could be, this could be a new Matt Harvey. And if it is, we're going to be in trouble, but we're saying it's not. The Tigers, as uh, you've heard me say again and again, we think that's an improving team that is getting better, will be better tomorrow. The day after that, they're going to be even better than that. This is a team getting better. So uh, we like the Tigers here at a not too hateful price at home against, you know, the worst team in the American League. So go Tigers. Uh, we're going to take a crack here with the Braves as a home dog. I don't often play these home dogs, uh, but I think it's a good spot. You know, they should have a pretty good crowd down there on a Friday night. The Braves are coming off a road trip where they played uh, divisional opponents, including the leading Mets. Big win last uh, yesterday for the Braves to keep them in it. They're making moves. You know, they're not break the bank type moves, but they're moves that are going to help them. You know, they're getting some help in the outfield now, uh, bringing in Duvall, bringing in uh, uh, somebody else. Um, name escapes me. It wasn't a... You know, a huge name, but it was a name that would help them. Uh, so they're getting some depth to help these guys. I think that'll keep the the locker room up, kind of saying, "Hey, we, this isn't over." You know, we you know, we've got a chance here. And, and, and when you think about it, that's a team that this isn't like a one year deal for these guys. In other words, and then next year it'll all be different because everybody's gone. No, uh, just about everybody will be back, and they'll have Acuna back. So, yeah, I think the locker room of Atlanta is pretty up at the moment. Uh, the Brewers, you know, it's going to be coast time for these guys soon. I don't think they take the Reds seriously, uh, and I think these guys at some point are just going to start coasting. So, I think this is. Oh, and then lastly, this Toussaint guy. He was a he got smacked all over the place. They sent him down, and all of a sudden, his last few starts since he's come back up, he's been good. You know, he pitched in Philadelphia. Saw him uh, what last week, and he was good. He got beat, but he pitched well. So we're going to take a shot there with the Braves, Mariners, Rangers. Uh, another big home dog here, big price on the Rangers. Um, I just think the Mariners. They're, they're, they've been totally turned around now. This whole deal where they trade their closer, who was you know not a guy they just bring in the ninth inning to get hopefully the last three outs. He was pitching lights out, this Graverman. He was just going off. And he was a big part of that team. And they trade him. Not only do they trade him, they trade him to the divisional leader, the Astros. It's like, talk about the fuck you from the front office. And the front office had some mealy mouth uh, thing about, yeah, don't worry. Well, it's not over yet. We're getting value. Blah, 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 blah. The players know it's all bullshit. They know that that team never intends to win. Uh, I always keep thinking it comes back. It's a pyramid. It's a pyramid. You know, every team. Whoosht, whoosht. And here at the top, you got the the owner. You know, that, that evil overlord billionaire that controls it all. And that's what it all comes down to. Is who's my owner? Does this guy want to win or not? Or does he just want to turn a profit uh, and 
so he could brag to his other billionaires at their uh, country club about uh, how his bottom line is better than their bottom line or what have you. And whoever owns the, the Mariners, and I don't know, I should know this, I have it written in a file somewhere, I can't regurgitate it to you right at this moment. This guy doesn't want to win. I mean, that's clear. You know, the, the, the history of this franchise over the last 20 years is clear that this guy doesn't give a shit about winning. Otherwise, he would at least have his general manager think about not, oh, well, we got a guy on an expiring contract. Well, the we must have value and save money and always keep this team mediocre so we can always be in the black manual, says that we have to flip that extension the firing contract because we're not going to re-up this guy we all know that we, we would have to pay him we don't want to do that so we got to get some other cheap player back and they did they get some you know potential star you know third baseman hitting 210 from the astros um toro will he be a star maybe i mean the guy's 24 and He's behind Bregman in Houston, so maybe he's a future star, but maybe not. So at any rate, the, the, the whole thing there, the Astros don't care. The players, that's been made painfully aware to the players again. So the Mariners are sad right now. They're just kind of like, man, we thought we had something here. We really were building something here. And, and for at least this week, you know, maybe they'll, you know, there's still a lot of talent down in that Seattle locker room that they might say yeah you know what fuck the owner let's get it together let's band together and win this for us but for this week i think they're just all sad and this price is way too high for a bunch of sad players on the road uh we'll take the rangers white Sox, indians same theory indians are selling off the indians are uh, uh, in a way, I'm a little surprised. Well, I am, I'm not. You know, again, back to this. Who, now, this I do know who's at the top of the Indian pyramid, and that's a Dolan. And Dolans suck. You know, the Dolans own the Knicks, too. Any Knicks fans out there? Well, then you know that James, is it James Dolan? Whoever that curly head fuck is at the head of the uh, New York Knicks, that guy's a dick. You know, that guy doesn't care about winning, he doesn't give a shit about the fans. Uh, so his, I believe it's his brother owns the Indians and it's the same thinking. It's the same theory. They're cheap as hell and they're selling off and they're giving up. But when you think about it, it's like, how can you give up when the pitching that you have, even though a few of it's on the DL, you get that pitching healthy, anything could happen, but they're giving up. They're selling off Terry Francona. He, he was closer to the top of the pyramid than, you know, anybody else, really. And he's, he's tapping out for health reasons. So you know goddamn well the team is done with this year for the uh, uh, soon-to-be Guardians. So uh, we'll take the White Sox there. Uh, Astros Giants, um, not often you get paid to play a premium team like the Astros. So we're getting 115 uh, at San Francisco to play with play the Astros. I think we got to take a shot there with that. Uh, Gossman's been good, but then you know it's not like Gossman's a Scherzer. You know this is kind of a one-year wonder guy. And uh, at what point does this guy revert back to who he's always been? You know, is it this week? Is it next week? Will it be next season? Uh, but at some point, this guy probably is going to, you know, much like the Denny Green, he is who we thought we, he was. You know, he, he, he'll become what he was. Uh, so we like the Astros there. And lastly, uh, Padres, sure. You know, uh, we're trying to find places to play the Padres at home that isn't too hateful a price. Uh, they, we, we, we really liked them earlier in the week against the A's and they got their asses kicked. So we were happy to avoid that one. Uh, but I can't help myself here. We just, you know, it's under 200. The Rockies on the road suck. Um, the Padres need to keep winning. Plus they're just bringing in like 
player after player after player. Uh, so this is a really good and deep Padre team, and they they want to be there. The fan they're selling that place out. People are excited. They want to win. The fans want to win. I don't think that's too bad of a price to pay uh, for a superior team against the division opponent that they usually, you know, they, they, I don't want to say they always handle them, but they're much better than the Rockies, especially with the Rockies on the road. So, like that one. So, our top plays are the Astros and the uh, Tigers, and then fill in the rest. Good, thanks, great. We appreciate you. Um, hit the like button. You know, we need to hit a few like buttons here and there. Uh, and then uh, we'll try to hit some winning picks. Maybe that should be a, you know, I don't, never mind. Never mind. I've had those days where I think people cycle. You have a bad day. And I think people cycle back to the video just to hit the dislike button. Just to say, you lost. Fuck you. It's like, all right, I get it. I get it. I suppose, you know, that's your right. It's a free pick. Sure. sure yeah, go ahead. Tell me that you didn't like my free pick. So, whatever. But we hopefully will these will be winners. You won't need to do that. You won't need to cycle back and hit the dislike button. Hopefully you'll cycle back and hit the like button because we won. That's what we're hoping for. So let's keep it going. Let's keep moving. I don't know when the next video is going to be. We'll probably get you one for Saturday because we like to play Saturdays. So we'll do our best we can for that. Uh, goodbye. That's all I have.